Now let's take the conversation to Kenya. The National Assembly has approved President William Ruto's 24 cabinet secretary nominees, paving way for their appointment to the top executive offices in charge of developing and implementing policy and government programs. Recall that the House had rejected the National Assembly Committee on Appointments move to declare tourism and wildlife cabinet secretary nominee Penina Maloza as unsuitable for the role. The committee, which is chaired by Speaker Moses Wetangula, had declared Ms. Malonza unsuitable, saying the former QT uh, deputy governor did not show a grasp of the issues in the docket. But well, MPs on Tuesday ganged up against the report, castigating the committee for what they said was unfairly targeting Ms. Malonza. They argued that Ms. Malonza had the integrity and professional background that allows her to manage such an office. Now let's bring in governance and policy analyst Abdullahi Alas. He joins us live from Kenya. Good morning, Mr. Alas. Thanks for joining us. Alas, uh, can you hear us? Good morning. All right, we might be struggling with that connection. Um, Alas, good morning. Can you hear us? Yes, I do. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Not very clear, but we'll go. We'll take it. Uh, let's get your your view on this. One month after yeah, the nominees uh, were announced by the president, the, uh, the parliament has finally, or the members of the parliament have finally given a nod for the appointment. What has been the general view of Kenyans now about these nominees? Well, there has been a mixed reaction against uh, the nominees because they are those that. Uh, had cases or integrity issues. There are those that people saw were fit and competent enough. They were those that were thought to be incompetent and they, they, they were not you know, qualified to hold those positions, even though in Kenya there is no certain qualification to hold such positions, Captain Secretary. But it's, it's, it's mainly seen as, as, as a president who has just been rewarding loyalists in, in, in Kenya uh, from Aisha Juma, who had a murder case facing murder cases, to Linturi, who had more than three cases. Uh, President is a case where the former Treasury Cabinet Secretary was told to step aside because of corruption. So there is a mixed reaction, and people felt there was a double standard in those that were politically correct could still be observed, and those that were politically incorrect could still be facing, you know, a, a court cases in the court. Um, all right, the Azimio Laumoja One Kenya Coalition Party MPs had said that it should not be used as mere rubber stamps for the executive, and they had insisted that four nominees should be dropped to redeem the image of the parliament. Can you tell us their reason? Well, I think, first of all, in the Kenyan standing orders in parliament, they can't dissent, but you see, when you are employing people at the policy level, because the executive arm of government is where these guys will be sitting with the president and the deputy president. So their concern will have been is, or even most Kenyans will be, is why can't we, you know, appoint those that we think are uh, having the merits? They have shown competence, knowledge, experience in the fields they are being, you know, given, and those that were were, were, were supposed to be dropped. But now in parliament, they can only dissent and give their. A minority, you know, uh, dissent. But now, Parliament is Kenya Kwanza majority with the UDA party leading and then Ruto's men are in charge. So, the reason is to say that we sh Parliament must look at competency and raise the standards for for people who are going to be leading uh, Kenya cabinet uh, front in the world. So, the idea of of now saying you will just have a, where does that leave remember parliament is an independent arm of government unlike uh, the presidency where, where the president is in charge under the Kenyan constitution we have three arms of government and parliament is supposed to be or, or even by law show some some independence in terms of uh, 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 acting in the interest of the public and in the interest of Kenyans in the spirit of the constitution where fairness, competitiveness, are, are. because if you look at Kenyan Article 10 and Article uh, 232, both give fair representation to everyone. So their concern is that uh, why is parliament becoming an extension of the executive, especially the presidency? Yeah, and these are genuine concerns, because if you, you compare 
um, uh, 2015 in Nigeria, I'm just going to use this as an example, 2015 in Nigeria, after the, the government came into office, it took a while before they eventually uh, um, named its, its cabinet or its ministers. And a lot of Nigerians at that time pretty much said that these persons that were named were simply rewarded for their support of the government's um, the election uh, bid, uh, you know, presidential bid, basically. Um, so that seems to be what's playing out in Kenya now with William Ruto and the criticism there. So, and as I, I want you to share your views on why this might be dangerous for the growth of Kenya and why William Ruto may not listen to these bits of criticism. Well, I think even in the spirit of good governance, I mean, Kenya is, is now implementing a new to promulgate the constitution and it took a while for chaos to be on is that uh, we need a uh, very critical because if you look at the president's way he's doing things making promises they having his way in parliament then having his way in judiciary remember when he came to power most of the guys around him cases have been drop, dropping thick and fast and that is, uh, for those who have, you know, a closer eye on the good governance of this country, it's very dangerous because a, a Chesa was, a guy called Rashid Chesa was in 2018 vetted and most parliamentarians thought he was not qualified to, to take up his job. And later on, it became very difficult to implement policies when you're green on about it. So I think the danger is how is someone who is incompetent enough or, or could not even perform in front of parliamentary, represent Kenya in the world stage. And I think this is also a question for Africa, where African presidents must, you know, allow people to, you know, parliament to act, to do its work so that at least we have enough competence, 60 years, 50 years, you know, almost Kenya is 59 years or 50, 60 years after independence. So you cannot be talking of, there are many Kenyans who are competent, uh, who who can showcase our country and even the continent in Africa where we are going to have people with the skill sets required in that particular docket too. So the danger here is Kenyans might not be getting quality for their money. Kenyans might not be getting people who they deserve hmm. to be to be serving in this and that is not for good governance. All right. And the um, progress of democracy in our country. Very important points you've uh, made there, Abdullah Allah. Thank you so much for your time this morning.